So recently, I sat down and decided to make a list of my 20 favorite albums of all time because apparently I'm a masochist and I like inflicting pain on myself. So I thought then I would make it into a video. Yay! <laughs> this list is in no particular order until we get to the last two albums. Without further ado, these are my 20 favorite albums of ever all time. First we have Tourist History by Two Door Cinema Club, and I cannot find my copy of that thing. I'm missing a lot of my physical copies of these albums because like I bought them a long long time ago and they're like in boxes and shit because my room is not very big. Tourist History is one of the best debut albums from any artist I've ever heard. I will never get tired of that thing, it will always be catchy, and I love seeing Tudor Cinema Club play live because they're A, adorable as fuck, uh, B, always on top of their game. I love Tourist History so much, it's crazy. Next up we have Ga 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 by Spoon. I can thank my friend Renee for um, basically shoving Spoon into my face all those years ago. Britt Daniels' voice is one of my favorite voices in rock and roll. It's one of the sexiest voices in rock and roll I've ever heard. And that album was like my first foray into the world of Spoon, even though like Gimme Fiction and Girls Can't Tell are like older and awesome and great. And then Transference came out and it was beautiful. Ga 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 ga. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. <laughs> is is perfect. And the underdog will always be a song that will make me want to dance. I love Spoon. I want them to come back. Wait, they're playing in Sasquatch. They are coming back. Yay! Then we have Talk by Ciro's. And I don't know if I'm saying talk, tack, take, talky. It's Icelandic, so I don't know how to say it. I fucking love that album. Like, Hopi Paula is just emotions in a song. It says a lot when something can speak to you so much when you have no clue what they're saying. I love Ciro's and I really loved seeing them twice in the last year. Yeah, because they played at Sasquatch and then they played at the Paramount and it was gorgeous. So recently I went to Easy Street Records and I posted a picture on Instagram with my swag that I came out with. I bought some CDs and then I bought a couple of albums, vinyls, because I want to build up my vinyl collection and the first additions to my vinyl collection, I want to be my top 20 favorite albums of all time. The first one I got was Rilo Kylie's More Adventurous. This was one of the first albums I really, really got into in like that indie pop kind of world. 2004 was a really fucking good year for music for me. Um, just gotta say. It's a hit. Does he love you? Portions for Foxes. Portions for fucking Foxes is just such a catchy damn song, I can't even. Love and War, More Adventurous, Accidental Death, this thing's flawless, like, oh my god. Jenny Lewis, you flawless human. I love Jenny Lewis so much, it's ridiculous. Like, if I could make out with a girl, like, Jenny Lewis. And since I have my vinyls out, the next one is uh, Gorilla Manor by Local Natives. This album, man, I saw Local Natives at the first Sasquatch I ever shot back in 2010. I was like, who is this band? I need to buy their album because all of the songs are great. It's such a cool album art, just like, it's so great. I fucking love Local Natives. They're always flawless live with their three-part harmonies and gorgeous mustaches. The Head and the Heart by The Head and the Heart. Andy got it signed for me when he went to one of their in-stores because uh, I didn't feel good and who wrote on there? Was that J? Was that a Josiah? That looks like a J. Um, but this album is just... It has a special place in my heart just because I'm so proud of them. They are such a big part of this music scene and such a good ambassador for like the rest of Seattle musicians. Lost in my mind. Sounds like hallelujah. Down in the valley. Rivers and roads just... Next we have Give Up by the Postal Service because reasons, um, there's really nothing I need to say to explain how flawless this album is. It's been 11 years. It's been 11 years since this came out and it's always gonna be perfect. Jenny Lewis and Ben Gibbard? What? Could you get a more perfect duo? No. And because uh, I just mentioned Ben Gibbard, Transatlanticism, it is the record when I think of Death Cat for Cutie. There have been so many albums that have come out since Transatlanticism, but none of them can compare to it, in my opinion. Like, Plans was great, but Transatlanticism was just like... 
life-changing for me. Next we have Twin Cinema by The New Pornographers, and that again was another one that came out in 2004. And I don't really listen to it that often anymore, but every time I go back and I listen to it and I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it is. It is one of my favorites because it's always great and it never gets old. When I first got it, like, that was when I was first, like, discovering my musical taste. That is kind of, like, right at the beginning of all the rest of it. And then also in 2004, which I can't find. I can't find either of these. They're probably in a box under the house. Um, Absolution by Muse. Black Holes and Revelations was pretty fucking great, but Absolution for me was flawless. And it makes me really sad that all of Muse's albums since Black Holes and Revelations have paled in comparison to those two albums. And just Absolution was like the soundtrack to my sophomore year of high school. <laughs> like that album. Man, Matt Bellamy, why'd you have to go and fuck everything? Next we have The Crane Wife by The Decemberists, and again, I can't find it. All the songs of The Crane Wife are perfect in their own right, and then all together, like Crane Wife Part 1 and 2, Crane Wife Part 3, Sons and Daughters, always give me feels, and The Decemberists were the first Portland band that I fell in love with, and they opened the door to so many other Portland musicians, and I love Colin Malloy, he just speaks to me, okay? I love, I love Colin. Next we have Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix by Phoenix. And again, I cannot find that record. Album, CD. Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix was my first foray into Phoenix. And again, I can thank my friend Renee for like shoving them in my face. Listomania and 1901 were the songs that opened those doors for me into all of the older albums. And then I saw Phoenix twice in the first year I got into their music. And they're so charming and French and adorable. Next we have Brain Thrust Mastery by We Are Scientists. And this was the album that I was like, should I keep it on there? Cause I love Brain Thrust Mastery like so much, but I'll tell you more later. It's here somewhere. That was like my starting point. And then I went back and then I went forward and it was just perfect. And I love Brain Thrust Mastery and I love We Are Scientists so much. Ghouls was the soundtrack to my freshman year of college. Next up we have Meriwether Post Pavilion by Animal Collective. And I'm not just talking about MPP because I want to sound cool because I like Animal Collective, but I genuinely, this is one of my favorite albums ever. I was introduced to Animal Collective the first year I ever went to Sasquatch back in 2009, when I went for one day to go see the Decemberists, uh, Bon Iver and Kings of Leon. When I got down to the main stage, Animal Collective was on stage and I had no clue who this was. And I was like, what is happening right now? I don't know what's happening, but I really, really like it. It was magical and it was mystical. And I'm like, this, it's like drugs, what? And that was the album that kind of opened my eyes to this whole new world of like experimental crazy music. Summertime clothes, my girls, brother sport, God damn it, so good. And then the next one will probably be a little bit controversial. Bon Iver by Bon Iver. And really it's controversial because most people's favorite Bon Iver album is For Emma Forever Ago. I love Justin Vernon's voice more than a lot of things. Um, but when you added like the multi-layered complex like production, it kind of hit me harder and hit me more. Um, I, I love him doing like stripped down acoustic music, but I just preferred the second record better. I really like it, and Holocene always makes me cry, which is not a bad thing. And when I saw those songs live, I just chills. Next we have Hot Fuss by The Killers. This was the album that changed my life. It opened so many doors for me. Um, I heard I heard somebody told me on 107.7 The End, and then I went out and bought this, and I saw them play at Deck the Hall Ball in 2004, and I just... Again, 2004 was a really fucking good year for music for me. Oh my god. 10 years ago. Holy fucking shit. I'm not okay with that. Next we have uh, Big Echo by The Morning Benders. I love The Morning Benders so much because um, I saw them open for We Are Scientists the very first time I ever saw We Are Scientists back in 2008. And then when this album came out and I'm like, oh boy, we've got something here. And I... <sighs> and excuses, the first song on this thing is so... Perfect. The third time I heard it, I'm like, this is gonna be my first dance song at my wedding. I am I just want them to come back to Seattle because I miss Chris and Julian and John and I miss them so much. Can they come back? Like, Chris, leave Japan, please. I can't tell you how much I love this. Next we have 
Friend and Foe by Menomina. I couldn't find that one too. I want to buy it on vinyl because I feel like it's going to be really, really beautiful on vinyl. Just the, like, the album art. Because it's such a weird, freaking creepy cover. Um, and it's a weird, freaking creepy album. Like, if you listen to the songs, you're like, this is weird. But it's everything that I love about Portland. It's everything I love about Menomina. It's everything I love about Brent and Justin and Danny. I don't know how those men were able to just come together and make this music separately and then just intertwine it. But Friend and Foe was their concerto. It was their just be all end all. Maybe just email Barsu could be like, hey, do you guys have this? I want it. And now we're getting down to the wire. My second favorite album of all time is The Color and the Shape by the Foo Fighters. Dave Grawl is legitimately one of my favorite people in the whole wide universe, world, space, time, continuum. My favorite thing about Dave is that he's still a fanboy for like, Paul McCartney when he's like recorded an album with Paul McCartney and I'm like you are such a big and well-respected person in the music industry but you're still just as much of a fanboy as everyone else and it's awesome. And now for the um the one that you all should have just guessed uh I know my friend Aaron was like this album better be on it and I was like duh uh, with Love and Squalor. But we're a scientist. This, this is the cats. This is everything that I love about those boys, those men, those beautiful, beautiful people. We Are Scientists has got a singing guitarist, a bassist who croons backup, and a drummer who can nail the high notes. Yes, the future looks bright for was, unless you consider that not one among them can read. That's in the liner notes. Can you guys, you don't understand like how much this album means to me. Like it's insane. Like. I can't. This album was my life, freshman year of college, just, yeah. So those were my 20 favorite albums of all of eternity. Let's pick a song off of More Adventurous. Hmm. Let's pick It's a Hit off More Adventurous because It's a Hit from We Are Scientists is my favorite song of all time, but this is another one called It's a Hit. I have two albums with songs called It's a Hit, that's funny. And you should go listen to it because it's really cute and I love Jenny Lewis and this album is 10 years old and that's freaking me out. Leave your favorite albums in the comments below. If you haven't heard some of these albums, I strongly suggest going and checking them out because they're my favorites of ever. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!